What is up, everyone? Corn O'Keefe back yet again. And as the title implies, I'm bringing you yet again another death battle prediction. I definitely had to do one for this one. We have Master Roshi versus Jiraiya Sensei himself. Pervert versus pervert. So without further ado, I'm going to tell you who I think would win and why. Now, both these characters are absolute badasses. I personally love them both. Now, there is a couple ways this could go, depending on the variables. But since Dragon Ball Super is a thing and basically connected with Dragon Ball, then that does mean they're going to be using Dragon Ball Super. And Roshi actually does have some pretty interesting things going on for him in Dragon Ball Super. But before I fully dive into that, I will start off by saying I do think, in my own opinion, Jiraiya would defeat original Dragon Ball Roshi. And yeah, I know he did blow up the moon. That's true. He did legitimately blow up the moon. But here's the thing about that. He was maxed out. So that's a thing. He had to be maxed out to do so. So it wasn't like a casual thing. And he does not have that type of durability in his normal base state. He doesn't have moon level attack power and durability in his base state. And back then he had really bad stamina in his max power state as well. Took him a few seconds to actually charge it up all the way as well. And what I'm getting at here is Jiraiya compared to original Dragon Ball Roshi is actually faster, which I'll get into the speed here in a second. Later on, when I talk about Jiraiya, you could say. And honestly, he has way more hacks. He could overwhelm Roshi back then. And he's not just going to sit there and let him fire it off at him. And if he does, there's this thing called Substitution Jutsu as well, or Shadow Clone Jutsu, etc. So, yeah, with that being said, I do believe in terms of back then, Jiraiya could pull out a win, honestly more often than not at least six times out of ten so let's go ahead and go over each character real fast and then I'll tell you why I believe Dragon Ball Super Master Roshi is actually going to take victory so starting off we actually see Master Roshi in the resurrection of F Saga during Dragon Ball Super fighting off against Frieza soldiers taking them on took a few down in his own right and we also see him demonstrate that he has more stamina now in his buff form, his max power state. He can actually hold it longer now, which is very interesting. Later on down the line, he's in what is supposed to be a TN episode, which I'm not going to get into that right now. But ends up being a Roshi episode, surprisingly enough. And we see Roshi basically get possessed, his morals go off you know he does not have his morals on at this point in time and what we see him do is basically overwhelm Tien and take down Tien, Tien Shinhan this is the same Tien who was basically able to destroy Cybermen who are comparable to Raditz moon busting Raditz, moon level Raditz you could say later on Tien came in was able to basically scratch put a little bit of scratches on semi-perfect sell, push him back, do something that other people at that point in time couldn't exactly do. And what I'm getting at here is if Death Battle, you know, takes Master Roshi's morals off and puts him at his fullest potential like that, then he's easily above baseline planet level, at least. I know how that sounds, but in terms of like striking strength and just attack potency, yes, he did overwhelm somebody with his morals off who is at least above base planet level aka TN and being on that level being able to react to him as well would put him at FTL speeds and that makes sense he, since he would actually be at relativistic speeds during the resurrection of F-Saga fighting those Frieza soldiers who should at the very least be comparable to Raditz who in his own right had relativistic speeds now, we also find out in this episode that Roshi has actually been training in secret, as stated by Goku. And we also see, briefly, Roshi swap hands with base Goku. Now, it is basically unquantifiable 
because we didn't really know for sure how much power Goku was using. Obviously, we just can't say, oh, he's equal to base Goku. Obviously, I don't agree with that at all. But that just goes to show it's just more supporting evidence that he does have his you know secret training, so to speak, and he's a lot more powerful than we've ever known him to be. He destroyed the moon back in the day, and now look where he's at. And he has way more stamina in his buff form now. He went to the Tournament of Power, demonstrated some incredible feats. Like the fact he can also use the Mafuba, aka the Evil Containment Wave, more than once now without dying. Because if you remember, he died from it before just from trying to use it once. Now he can use it, I believe, two or three times he did in the Tournament of Power. He at least used it twice, maybe three times if I remember correctly. He also has his Electrical Surprise attack. He has hypnosis, after images, he created the Kamehameha, he was trained by Master Mutaito, yes, trained martial artist, trained by his own master, Mutaito. Basically, Mutaito was the first set hero to step up to fight Demon King Piccolo back in the day and seal him away. And heck, Roshi even climbed Korin's tower and trained with Korin. And he also fought someone in the Tournament of Power who Roshi stated himself was stronger than Roshi himself. And Roshi, at the end of the day, ended up breaking his own limits and beating this guy after already beating two other opponents previously. So that basically gives you the gist of Roshi as a whole as of right now. Moving on to Jiraiya, and I'll tell you why I think Roshi ultimately wins as of right now. So Jiraiya Sensei trained by the third Hokage, aka Sarutobi Sensei himself. The Toad Sage, one of the legendary Sonin, one of the three legendary Sonin. We know him for being a pervert, obviously. He trained Naruto, taught him the Rasengan. He himself knows the Rasengan. He has his Sage Mode, although it should be noted it, it is an imperfect Sage Mode. It's not like perfect, like Naruto's per se, but nonetheless, it's very helpful. Able to summon Ma and Pa to aid him. They can perform powerful Genjutsu. Jiraiya himself has plenty of hacks. Can turn you to a frog or toad just by tapping you. Can perform fire style Jutsu, shadow clones, as I mentioned, substitution. He even has the massive Rasengan, which has been confirmed and stated to be able to carve through mountains. So that's pretty freaking impressive. Able to fight against some of the paths of pain, even take a few out before ultimately being defeated. And he's able to keep up with them in combat and react to their attacks, etc. And if we know anything about pains, they're obviously faster than Kakashi. And Kakashi, when he was younger and drained of stamina and chakra, was able to actually cut a lightning bolt in half. Fast enough to actually run up a cliff, react, and cut a lightning bolt in half. And obviously, Jiraiya himself, at least while he's in imperfect sage mode, would be much faster than young Kakashi, who is already cutting lightning bolts in half. And as we know, Itachi, while heavily drained, was able to react to Sasuke's Kirin, which is basically pure lightning. He was able to react to that at the last second. So, yeah, Jiraiya's in the massively hypersonic ranges easily, very casually. He can also summon other toads, such as Chief Toad, Gamma Bunta, and like I said, Ma and Pa, etc. Now, both these guys are very intelligent as well. It's pretty debatable as to who is a more intelligent fighter and all that. I mean, yeah, Ma Master Roshi is a master martial artist, but Jiraiya is a master ninja and knows plenty of martial arts in his own right. Master of Taijutsu, freaking Taijutsu expert. So that basically sums up Jiraiya for you folks in a way. At the end of the day, like I said already, I do believe Jiraiya would defeat Master Roshi from original Dragon Ball. I do believe he's fast enough and haxy enough and has enough attack potency to take out Roshi before Roshi has the chance to buff up and perform his moon-busting attack, his moon-busting Kamehameha. But now, Roshi has more stamina in his buff form. He can perform this Kamehameha a lot easier, a lot less strenuous, you could say. 
Um, he's obviously faster now, at least in the relativistic ranges, so he is faster than Jiraiya now and a lot more durable now. And I do want to say his hypnosis really won't have any effect on Jiraiya. Jiraiya deals with ninjas who use very powerful genjutsu that would put Roshi's hypnosis to shame. Not saying anything bad about it, I'm just saying compared to other hypnosis and stuff like that in the Naruto verse, it's just not looking that great. But Roshi does have other techniques, you know, the Mafuba, the electrical surprise, and all his other techniques. But ultimately, right now, he is way faster than Jiraiya, way more powerful, way more durable. And his techniques to just back all that up and help him take the victory at least six times out of ten. So I got to give this one to Dragon Ball Super Master Roshi. But let me know what you all think down below. Hope you enjoyed this prediction for what it actually was. Stay tuned for the next couple weeks. I got a few versus battles coming up, more shout outs, all kinds of stuff. As always, have a blessed day, folks. Peace.